Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our unit on art today, and today we're going to be talking about Wang Jianming and his colorful world of crayon painting. He had a great career in the American Baseball Leagues as a pitcher. He's all washed up now, and he's decided to come back to Taiwan and try his hand at being an artist, especially with crayons. <laughs> no, actually, it's not the same person. I understand that this person here we're talking. About today has the same name as the famous MLB pitcher from Taiwan. Yeah, but it's actually a different person here, and this is Wang Jianming or Wang Chenming, if you want to pronounce it using the Romanji spelling. Here, he's one of Taiwan's emerging artists, and he's using crayons in his drawings or in his paintings. It's interesting because usually with crayons we connect that with kids. Only kids or children use crayons to produce their artwork. But here it's an adult using crayons, which is kind of a new way to produce art. So we're going to learn more about this guy who is not a pitcher, as Tom said. He's someone different. He has the same name. We're going to get started by reading. Here we go. Unit twelve: Wang Jianming's colorful world of crayon painting. April twentieth. Wang Chenming, one of Taiwan's emerging artists, is using an unusual tool to create his vibrant masterpieces: crayons. He first puts layer after layer of rich color on a wooden board, and then rubs the crayons wax with his fingers to create the effect he desires. Wang's visually stunning artwork depicts local Taiwanese people, landscapes, animals, and scenes from his everyday life. Though he's a professional today, Wang embarked on his career as a crayon painter by chance. Initially a photographer, Wang merely wanted to decorate his new office with artwork. After receiving some spare wooden boards from his neighbor, Wang carved some ornamental patterns into them, thinking painting over the engravings would brighten up his workspace. However, none of the pigments he tried worked well on the wood. When Wang noticed the crayons his son had left in the corner of the room, he decided to give the simple coloring tools a go. Not only did the crayons work perfectly on the wood, but they created some unexpectedly incredible effects too. Still, many people associate crayons with children's play, not fine art. They may even consider crayon painting nothing but a waste of time. According to Wang. Neither of these beliefs is true, which is why he teaches crayon painting workshops. During one such class in Shenkeng, Taiwan, Wang taught the elderly how to create their own crayon painting masterpieces. Wang was touched to see how the old men and women's creative projects actually helped them strengthen their family bonds. The art pieces became something the elderly could share with their loved ones. To Wang. This represents one of crayon painting's greatest charms. It's down-to-earth nature. Crayon painting reassures artists that painting doesn't have to be an expensive or complicated process. Anyone can use these ordinary tools to create glamorous illustrations. Okay, guys, let's get started. What are crayons? Crayons are those sticks of colored wax that kids use. They come in boxes of, say, eight, twelve, twenty-four. I remember when I was a kid, we wanted the box that had sixty-four crayons. That was the biggest one, and it also <laughs> included a sharpener. Yes, a sharpener for your crayons. Very fun. Okay, so we're talking about one of Taiwan's emerging artists today, and he's using a really unusual tool to produce his different masterpieces. We're going to talk about. If you're an emerging artist, it means you're just starting to get some attention from the public. So maybe before you were a little bit less well known, and now you're just starting to get more publicity. People are talking about you, so it looks like his career is on a good path right now. 
Well, what's unusual about him is the tool that he uses to actually draw or paint with. It's a little kid's crayon, which is fun. We're calling his masterpieces vibrant because they have vivid colors. They're very, very bright. You could say, and a masterpiece is something. It's somebody who creates something that's just really amazing and awesome, especially when they're artists. And they are vibrant, so I'm imagining lots of bright colors,、yeah. lots of energy and stuff like that. And again, crayons are wax. Pencils or wax markers, I guess you could call them. They're made from wax, and they're the most basic of coloring、uh, tools in art. Then you get、uh, pastels, past that, oil pastels, and markers and other kinds of things. Well, he uses crayons, and what he does, he first puts layer after layer of rich color on a wooden board, and then rubs the crayons wax with his fingers to create the effect he desires. Maybe he's trying to blend. Blend the colors, or something like that, and that's nice to do with wax. It creates its own kind of effects there. If you use pastels, they're kind of dirty, and you get this dust all over the place. Crayons are a lot cleaner. That's probably why kids use them. So he's putting on a layer of something, which is just the base coat of something. But then he puts another coat on top of that, and then another on top of that. So that is layer after layer of rich. Color, but he's not using paper here. He's using a wooden board. That's an interesting medium here. And then, of course, he uses his fingers to kind of rub the wax of the crayon, and that gives him the effect that he wants. Well, it says here that he creates visually stunning artwork. If something stunning, guys, it's so amazing that it's almost impossible to believe that you're looking at something that impressive or that attractive. So, usually, it's used for things we can see. You can describe someone who's beautiful as looking stunning that day. Wow, you look stunning in that dress. Wow, your suit is great. You look stunning. So it's a word that we use when something's extremely impressive. Now his artwork depicts or shows local Taiwanese people, the landscapes here in Taiwan, so scenery from outdoors, animals, and also scenes from his everyday life. Things we take for granted, things we all do, like we get up,、uh, we eat breakfast, you know, we have lunch. Things that everybody does every day or everyday life activities. That's right, and I did want to mention here that this word is often misspelled. Every day is the adjective here, our everyday life. But if you say you do something every day, then that's two words. Okay, I drink a cup of coffee every day. It's not one word there; it's two words. But here, every day is describing your life, everyday life. In my everyday life, I drink coffee. Every day. Okay, so here, of course, he's、uh, drawing all sorts of stuff. And hey, I'd like to kind of check this stuff out.、Mm. I'm sure our article in the magazine will include pictures of his artwork, but you can probably find some examples online. Or if you're lucky, maybe there's an exhibition going on right now. Now let's move on now to the next paragraph. It says, though he's a professional today, Wong embarked on his career as a crayon painter by chance. So though he's a professional today, it is true that he's a professional today.、Mm-hmm. It is also true that he began his career or he embarked on his career by chance. Okay, if something's done by chance, it's not something you planned on. It just happened to you naturally.、Mm-hmm. And yeah, he did not really plan to be a crayon painter by design. It wasn't his actual plan. It just sort of happened to him naturally. It was by chance. And to embark on something、uh, usually means to begin a journey, especially if it's on a ship or an airplane or something like that. But you can use this also to talk about your career,、uh, to embark. On your career as a doctor, for example. Well, initially he actually worked as a photographer. So initially means at the beginning. So he worked as a photographer. He's artistic. He has a good eye. People who are photographers usually can frame their pictures in a way that makes the photos look like pieces of art. But he just merely wanted to decorate his new office with artwork. He was just decorating his own office space, you could say. Merely just means just. That's all he wanted. It wasn't a lot. So after receiving some spare wooden boards from his neighbor, he carved some ornamental patterns into them. 
thinking paintings over the engravings would brighten up his workspace. So this is kind of the pattern or the path he went down in his discovery of his new tool, the crayon. Now, if you have spare change, it means you have money left over that you probably don't need. When I go to Seven Eleven or Family Mart and buy something, I'll give them maybe a one hundred dollar bill. And they'll give me the change back, so I don't have to use the whole bill. His neighbor had some wooden boards、uh, that he wasn't using, so he said, "Hey, you can use these; they're spare." So he got some boards from his neighbor, and then he took a knife or something very sharp and carved some really pretty ornamental patterns into them. Ornamental just means for decoration. And then he wanted, you know, to put some painting over the engravings. The engravings here refer to those ornamental patterns that he carved into the boards, and he was just going to paint over those, and then put them around his office space to make it look better, to brighten up his office space. Yeah, to engrave just means to carve into something, into a hard surface. Lots of、uh, different kinds of stone or wood can be engraved in. So an engraving is the result of that. So he thought, yes, I'm going to paint over those engravings or those ornamental patterns, and my workspace will be nice and bright and. Cheery, and I'll be happy to go to work every day. However, none of the pigments he tried worked well. On wood.、Mm. If you talk about pigments, you're talking about special kinds of chemicals or coloring that come from plants or from animals that are used to make paints or things that are used in art. Different kinds of pigments that produce different colors. But、uh, you know, you've got the pigments for oil painting or acrylic painting or pastels, but none of them really worked well on wood. Wood is a special surface. It's a special kind of material. And it's probably very difficult to get things to stick to wood. Notice Tom is not using the in the sentence. The sentence in your article it says it worked well on the wood. The reason why we're adding the in this sentence is we're talking about the specific wood that he has in front of him. But you can say it doesn't work well on wood. It doesn't work well on canvas. It doesn't work well on something. But here we're saying the specific pieces of. Of wood that he has, so it didn't work well on the wood. We're going to find out what he did, guys, next. But first, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 今天我们要介绍的是一位台湾的艺术家，他的名字叫做王建民。我们来看一下文章的第一个句子。Wang Jianming, one of Taiwan's emerging artists, is using an unusual tool to create his vibrant masterpieces. Crayons. 在这里提到呢，他用的是一种独特的工具来创作他的作品，用的是 crayons， 也就是蜡笔。既然第一句提到这个艺术家以及他所使用的工具，那么延续这样的主题，我们就要看一下他到底是怎么样的作画，做些什么东西呢？所以我们要选择 C 选项。在 Sentence C 里面提到 ，He first。Puts layer after layer of rich color on a wooden board, and then rubs the crayon's wax with his fingers to create the effect he desires. 在这里提到了他作画的方式。首先呢，是将一层又一层鲜艳的颜色把它叠在木板上之后，再用手指来摩擦蜡笔的蜡，来创造出他所想要的效果。所以先。Tendency 可以延续前面这个艺术家跟蜡笔还有他作画的风格。第一题的标准答案，我们就选择 C 选项。第二段一开始的句子提到 ，Though he's a professional today, one embarked on his career as a crayon painter. By chance, 虽然呢，这位艺术家今天已经是一个专业人士了。不过呢，其实他是呢，偶然才开始这样子的职业生涯。在这里的 by chance， 也就是呢，巧遇或者是偶然之中。到底发生了什么事呢？第二题，我们可以选择 sentence F。F 选项里面提到。
Initially, a photographer, Wang, merely wanted to decorate his new office with artwork. 原来啊，他不是一刚开始就要成为一个蜡笔的画家。原本他是一个 photographer， 是摄影师。他只不过是要用一些艺术品来装饰他的新办公室，所以是偶然之中成为了一个 crayon painter。所以第二题正确答案。我们可以选择 F 选项。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue with our lesson again. We're talking about Wang Jianming, the local artist here who paints or draws with crayons. This is also something I should mention. People here in Taiwan sometimes can't tell the difference between drawing and painting.、Uh, painting usually involves paint, something that is wet, like oil paint or acrylic paint. But then everything else is probably drawing if it's going to be dry, like drawing with crayons. Or with pastels, or with pencils. Although we are talking about painting here,、uh, that's because they're kind of big and colorful, like paintings. So let's just、uh, stick with that. And so again, he was having trouble getting these different kinds of pigments. To attach well on the wood, they just did not work well on the wooden boards that his neighbor had given him, and so he was wondering, "Gee, what should I do? I just can't make this work. It just doesn't look good." Oh, my son over there in the corner has his coloring books there, and he noticed the crayons. That his son had left in the corner of the room. Maybe his son went off to kindergarten or to school or something. And you know how kids are—they don't clean up after themselves. So the crayons were there in the corner, and he thought, "Hmm, maybe I will give these simple coloring tools a go." So in this sentence, we have the phrase "to give something a go." That just means to try to do something or try to use something. To attempt to do something, so he thought, "Why not?" You know, he's an artist, and they like to try different types of things. Well, not only did the crayons work perfectly on the wood, but they created some unexpectedly incredible effects too. So he was really unexpectedly surprised that it worked. So how fun to discover a new tool! Or implement that he can use in his artwork. It's kind of fun. It had some incredible effects that it created. Still, many people associate crayons with children's play, not fine art. Fine art is used to describe art that is usually created by an artist with a lot of training. His pieces of artwork usually sell for a lot of money if it's fine art. Things I create are not considered fine art.、Uh, you never know, though. You yeah, know, one man's no. junk is another man's <laughs> treasure.、Uh, if you associate something with something else, it just means the two of them are connected in your brain somehow. When I think of peanut butter, I always associate peanut butter with. Jelly, because I grew up eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So most people think, oh, crayons. Yeah, those are for kids. Kids play with those. They just, you know, they color in their coloring books. It's not for adults. Yeah, or I associate rice with Chinese food, for example. So in this case, a lot of people think of、uh, child's play when they see crayons. Child's play or children's play.、Uh, you can say that you want to play baseball. I don't want to play that. That's、mm. child's play. That's A children's game. I don't want to play that, and、uh, so people think of crayons as being just for kids. And these people may even consider crayon painting nothing but a waste of time. That's just for kids before they start studying for their tests. You're not supposed to use crayons anymore, and if you do, you're just wasting time. You should be using your time more efficiently. According to Wang himself, neither of these beliefs is true. So notice we're conjugating the verb here is. It matches neither. Neither is singular. So even though beliefs is plural, is is actually associated with neither. So neither is true. You know he doesn't believe those ideas, which is why he teaches 
crayon painting and workshops. So he has these workshops that you can attend to learn how to actually paint with crayons. It's kind of an interesting idea because typically Tom and I grew up thinking that crayons were used for drawing or coloring. But he is using this idea that you can paint with them. Exactly,、yeah. and he teaches crayon painting workshops、uh, in different places. And during one such class or one such workshop in、mm. Shenkeng, Taiwan, which is a suburb of Taipei City. It's in the new Taipei City now, actually. Yeah. Wang taught the elderly how to create their own crayon painting masterpieces. <laughs>、uh, Kung is also known for its dofu. They've got an old street there with lots of restaurants. But hey, you might be able to go there and participate in one of his crayon painting workshops. But、Fun. there. Maybe you need to be kind of old there. These are elderly people in this class, and、uh, they are creating their own painting masterpieces in that class, which is very nice. It's、uh, kind of cool here that、uh, he's not teaching kids how to draw with crayons. He's teaching elderly people how to use crayons. Ah, very fun. I would like to see how he does this. So maybe I'll look for one of his workshops. Now Wang was touched. It moved him. He felt emotional. About it, so we say touched. He was touched to see how the old men and women's creative projects actually help them strengthen their family bonds. If you strengthen something, you make something stronger, and your bonds with family is really related to your relationship. What is your relationship like with those in your family? So it really helped their family grow closer. You could say. And the art pieces became something the elderly could share with their loved ones. How wonderful! So it made them feel like they were producing something beautiful that they could then turn around and share with those that they loved. Exactly, and I'm imagining that crayons actually can、uh, be related to by kids and anybody of any age. If you're painting in oil or something,、uh, there's kind of a mystique about oil painting. You're an artist like Picasso, and maybe that will actually weaken the bonds between you、mm. and your family. They'll think you're kind of snobby or something because you're painting oil paintings. But these are crayon paintings, and anybody can relate to those. And in the final paragraph here, it says to Wong, this rep. Represents one of crayon painting's greatest charms. It's down to earth nature, which was kind of what I was saying there. A charm here, as a noun, just means a nice quality. It gives you delight. It gives you admiration. You think, oh, that's really cool. I really like that. And of course, the adjective is charming. Oh, that is quite a charming painting. Or he is quite a charming man. And also, down to earth just means very simple, not. Complicated. Yeah, down to earth people. They relate to everybody. They don't think they're too good for other people. So it's kind of fun because everybody feels like they have experience using crayons because we grew up with them. So crayon painting reassures artists that painting. Doesn't have to be expensive or complicated. No, it can be just fun for everyone. So it's probably really good for these older men and women who are going to the workshops. If you reassure someone, you say or do something that lets them know that they don't have to worry. It takes away any doubts they might have, and sometimes some fears that they have. So, if you reassure someone, for example, when I was little, I used to have bad dreams, and my mom would come in and say, "Oh, there's not a monster in your room. You'll be okay." She was reassuring me or removing my. Fears that I had. So, crayon painting reassures artists that they don't have to buy a lot of expensive things. Yay! And it's not complicated. If it's complicated, it has a lot of different parts. It's hard to understand. But this is actually simple. Maybe this is something you could learn, Stephanie. You're always saying that, oh, I I can't draw. I'm not an artist.、True. Maybe if you take、uh, one of his classes, you'll change your mind. Maybe. And anyone can use these ordinary tools to create glamorous illustrations.、Mm. If something's glamorous, it has a lot of glamour. Basically, it's really beautiful. It's very attractive, like glamorous women, for example.、Uh, yeah, usually glamour is used to describe beautiful women. And、uh, an illustration, of course, is a drawing that's usually done. To accompany something else, like a children's book is full of illustrations, or sometimes drawings in newspapers and magazines are illustrations there to go along with a story. Okay, guys. Right now, we're going to listen to a little bit more explanation, and then we'll be back to wrap up.
。当然喽，他收到了一些木板，就在上面呢雕刻了图案，然后把颜料放上去。第三个空格前面的句子提到 ，However, none of the pigments he tried worked well on the wood. 好像呢，他所放在木板上面的颜料，没有一种颜料的效果是好的。而要延续怎么样的文艺？那么第三个空格的句子就提到了 ：Not only did the crayons work perfectly on the wood, but they created some unexpectedly incredible effects too. 不仅呢，这个蜡笔在木头上的效果很棒，甚至也创造出一些意料之外的绝佳效果。要连续这样子的前后文艺。第三题，我们可以选择 Sentence A。A 的句子里面提到 ，When Wang noticed the crayons his son had left in the corner of the room, he decided to give the simple coloring tools a go. To give something a go, 也就是去试试看。所以呢，他觉得这些颜色都没有办法待在这个木板上面，他就发现了他儿子丢在角落的这些蜡笔，所以他决定要尝试使用这简单的着色工具来试试看它的效果如何。所以就可以接到后面句子提到，没想到。蜡笔的效果是非常棒的，所以第三题的标准答案我们就选择 A 选项。王建明也开始呢来教授蜡笔绘画开设了工作坊。我们在第四个空格前面的句子看到 ，During one such class in Shenkun, Taiwan, Wang taught the elderly how to create their own crayon painting masterpieces. 在深坑所开设的这个课程当中呢，他还教导这些年长者如何用这些蜡笔来创作。延续这样的文艺，第四个空格可以选择一、e、选项。Sentence E 里面提到。Wang was touched to see how the old men and women's creative projects actually helped them strengthen their family bonds. 因为教授的是长者，所以他被这些长者深深的感动。因为他们的画作呢，不仅增进了家庭的关系，也看到了他们的创意。所以延续前面的 the elderly 第四题的标准答案，我们可以选择一、e、选项。最后一段的第一句提到。To one, this represents one of crayon painting's greatest charms. It's down to earth nature. 对于王建明来说呢，这样子蜡笔绘画代表的最大的魅力就是它朴实的本质。在这里提到的是 down to earth nature。回应这样子朴实的本质，我们可以选择 B 选项。Sentence B 里面提到 ，crayon painting reassures artists that painting doesn't have to be an expensive or complicated process. 其实呢，蜡笔的绘画又再一次的向画家们说明了，绘画不必然是一个昂贵或者是复杂的过程，其实就是有着朴实的本性。所以第五题的标准答案就选择 Sentence B。以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully you will take inspiration from Wang Jianming, the crayon artist, and maybe create some masterpieces yourself with simple crayons.、Mm -hmm. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.